I did it. I put it in, but I didn't remember it. So, uh, all right. So, you also think uh, uh, it gave more creativity to the players as well to to type in everything and find out more than just having today's. I mean, more helping with uh, hotspot uh, help and whatever you have. Yeah, point and click w was a dual-edged sword. On the one hand, it made the games easier to play, brought more people into the fold, uh, let more people uh, enjoy the games. On the other hand, it removed one more layer of abstraction that typing in text gave you. And because text, typed text was so free form, um, you could type in anything. We didn't realize when we made the point and click games. All, all, all of, I think, uh, let's see, who would it be? Uh, uh, Roberta, Jim Walls, Scott Murphy, and I. So that would be, uh, Roberta was King's Quest, Jim was Police Quest, Scott was Space Quest, and I was Larry. Um, the four of us, our first point and click game were incredibly short and, and, and easy to play. And we found it out only after the game shipped how uh, how much of the difficulty of those early games was because people had to think of what to type and spell it correctly and think of the words that we thought of and you know the, all those things. Things and that really um, uh, uh, made the games much more difficult. So so our next game that we did, the second point and click games, all had like double the puzzles and uh, you know much more uh, depth to the game in order to get back to the same amount of um, uh, gameplay that we had in the early games yeah the point the point and click was uh, was it already the, the decline of creativity well I don't, it was the decline of of um, it was one more step down in mental involvement of the player you know the text only games the infocom games in the early 80s um, uh, the whole game was in your mind. I remember Planetfall and 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 um, uh, God, a lot of well, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide, a bunch of those games that uh, uh, Zork and and all the, boy, you just you you know, it was like reading a novel, except you were kind of writing it in your head as you went along, and and you were so involved. Um, and graphic adventures like we did were one step below that. We we took away a layer of abstraction by creating a scene for you to look at on the screen. Uh, and uh, But we had the typing still and the, and the free form of that. But then point and click with the hotspots took away another level of abstraction. And uh, yeah, that it, uh, uh, it, it was a dual-edged sword. You talked about personality that you were Larry and uh, uh, Roberta was uh, King's Quest and so on. And um, you think this kind of changed in today's industry today you have more maybe by numbers and big companies with many people doing different things you even have maybe uh, more um, well more storytellers who are working on one story and it's hard to distinguish who is actually writing the story who is doing the game I think the um, the the adventure games from Sierra and Lucas in the 80s back then uh, uh, were the game designer was much more like the auteur director of a film. Uh, you know, we were the Scorsese or the Woody Allen or the Bergman. You know, I, I mean, we weren't. Yeah, it, I don't mean to put myself in that league. I'm just saying that those people. You, you know, if you see a Bergman film and a Woody Allen film, you know which is which. <laughs> I mean, there's no confusion, and you know that Scorsese is going to have this sort of thing. And and they because those people's personalities are in those films, and I think that's what happened with us by uh, Ken's uh, uh, freedom that he gave us to take the games in the way we wanted to go. Uh, enabled us to do the kind of games that we wanted to play and therefore uh, reflected our personalities and that's why even though we used the same engine and a lot of the gameplay itself was limited by that I mean we only had 
you know, we only had a few functions. We, did, we didn't have a lot of stuff that we could do. So we tried to do what we could with what we had. But um, uh, it did enable us to make uh, storylines and characters and context um, that reflected our personalities. And so, you know, if you have played Space Quest, then you know what it's like to have lunch with Scott Murphy and Mark Crow. I mean, it's, they're, they're just that funny. I mean, it's just that goofy. Um, and and uh, they're great guys and very, uh, very fun people to be around. And Roberta is the same way. I mean, Roberta is, uh, you know, not big on a sense of humor. She's not much, you know, as, as far as joke telling and, and uh, that kind of stuff. But she has all these intricate ideas and she's so familiar with, with fairy tales and, and, uh, and that whole genre of storytelling and all those things. So uh, you know, those are you, you. You know that person, and it's difficult with today's technology. You would think it would be far simpler to do the same thing today, and yet somehow that we've allowed that personality aspect of the games to re fall out. You can see it in Mario. I, I mean, I think the Mario games, um, Sergio has, has been able to keep the. Um, uh, that personality going there, and and there are a few other games that are that way, but uh, for the most part, games that really suffered when uh, they became designed by committee. So uh, especially adventure games, I I heard that uh, in a not very recent interview with the German uh, magazine PC Games, you said that uh, especially the game Myst kind of uh, crippled the uh, game design industry, is that right? Or <laughs> Yeah, uh, looking back on it now, it's ancient history, but I remember at the time when Myst came out, it was a huge success, um, partly because it, it, <laughs> it, it benefited from the what I call the word perfect model of sales. Back then, you would go into a store that sold uh, software and you would actually deal with a human being. You would talk to somebody and you would say, well, what? Uh, my grandmother just got a computer. Uh, what word processor should I buy? And all of a sudden, and there was a certain period of time when all the clerks uh, across the world just said, eh, just get her word perfect because it does everything. Well, it wasn't really the right choice for your grandmother at all, but it was it was the answer that, that satisfied the most people, and therefore everybody started. That was the same thing that happened with Mist. When people uh, saw Mist and they looked at it, it was an easier sort of game to get involved with than ours. Uh, you didn't have typing. You know, there were hot spots, but they were pretty few and far between. There were it was much more first person immersive. There was no character on screen. There was no you know movement and so forth. Um, and uh, so when people would go into a store and they'd say, well, what game should I get? Oh, get a Mist. You know, they'll like Mist. And uh, it became th this great selling game, fortunately for those guys. But uh, sadly enough, it, it stifled the sales of the other adventure games that were out there because they, a lot of people got into Mist and they go, well, I, I don't really like this. This isn't... I, you know, I, 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 yeah, they would give up on it, and therefore, I think a lot of people gave up on adventure games. And I think that was a lot of the demise of the whole industry was uh, uh, the fact. And I don't mean to say that Mist killed the business, but it certainly um, uh, didn't increase our numbers. So Mist was like uh, the mainstream attempt to to appeal to. Uh, more people maybe at, at the same time also uh, alienating some others because it's I, I mean it's, it's easy to navigate but it's uh, um, and easy to understand but it's hard to solve the puzzle exactly. I mean for Lee exactly I, I gave up on the adventure there's not a lot of hints came out there's not a lot of hints in the game it, it, there, there's not really you you know you have to solve the puzzle on your own because the game won't help you uh, and that was always one thing that I tried to do in my games um, uh, because uh, um, much of the feedback that I got from gamers uh, said that the games, the puzzles were too hard. 
that there weren't enough clues that you, you know, how in the hell would you know to do that? That was always the problem we got. How, how was I supposed to know to, you know, and so I tried, the more I wrote games, the more hints I put in, the more help I gave you. And therefore, I got panned by the reviewers, the game press, out of university said, ah, you know, uh, yeah, Larry's funny, but it's not, it's not very challenging. Well, that would, to me, that was a compliment. That's what I wanted. I didn't want to be challenging to people. I wanted them to get all the way through and finish it and have a good time. And uh, uh, and I think Mist was really challenging uh, in its own way. Uh, a lot of it was very accessible, but then to finish it, it was a real challenge. And so I think a lot of people bought Mist and then said, yeah, I'm going to try something different. But maybe it also put off some people, uh, the Sierra games, where you died a lot. I mean, well, you, you loved it, didn't you? I We recognized death was a problem, and starting in Larry 5, I think, you couldn't die anymore. Uh, I took that input to heart when, when I read people say, my God, you just die all the time. And, and, uh, and so in Freddy Farkas, I made that into a joke. Uh, Freddy Farkas Frontier Pharmacist uh, is a game, uh, an adventure game that I wrote that um, uh, it had a storyteller, the narrator was, uh, whoa, look, oh, this is impressive, I, my goodness, you guys are really prepared here. Uh, yeah, anyway, Freddy had a, a, a number of ways, and any time that you did something that took you on a path where we couldn't retrieve you where you were irredeemable and uh, so we had to kill you off. Instead of killing you, we said, yes, and look, for some reason, Freddy did this and, um, you know, and went away forever and, you know, whatever. So we made fun of it and, and just pr gave you a button to just restart right back before you made the mistake. Uh, so, yeah, starting in, what would that be, 1991 or something, I think uh, we stopped, I stopped doing deaths altogether. There were no, there was no way to die in Larry Five and, uh, Uh, and Larry Six. There might have been one in Larry Six. I think I might have, because I didn't design it well, I kind of put you in a place where I, I couldn't get you out of it. And so, uh, but I tried to take that to heart and, and uh, stop dying. What do you think about the new uh, Telltale games? Oh, like uh, 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 resurrecting, uh, for example, uh, the, the King's Quest franchise and. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm so pleased with Telltale and what they're doing and, and uh, I, I wish them all the success in the world. I hope that they're able to uh, 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 be, be very successful. Uh, I would love to see that. And, um, and, and in that sense, I, I should also say that uh, the Larry franchise, the intellectual property, has been bought by uh, a company now that owns the rights and is planning to bring them out for Uh, phones and tablets with touch interface. They're going to change the interface and redo the graphics and supposedly uh, have the first game out this year. So we'll see. I hope so. Uh, yeah, we, we'll be able to play an adventure game again. We hope so too. W will it be uh, completely new graphics or updated graphics updated like graphics, uh, yeah. the special edition of Monkey Island? Maybe um, because Arts did? I'm not sure yet, but uh, my the word I've had is that they... I, I have little involvement with it but but um, uh, they have talked with me and and uh, uh, I said I don't think it's a good idea to uh, release the same games that came out in 1987 and, and uh, you know people have people type on their touch screens and you know and uh, they agreed and so the, we'll, we'll see how, how far they go but the first graphics that I've seen look great right so we are looking forward to see uh, the old Larry games in new in the new medium. New, new medium. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So, uh, and, and uh, I have to put in a plug for my website. I w if people don't know about allo.com and if they've sat through this interview this long, they they surely must want to see more. So, uh, go to um, allo.com and I have page after page of stories, inside stories about Sierra and game development and uh, you can download all my game design documents that I created over the years and uh, just a lot of the music. I have music from the games and sound effects and all kind of stuff and plus there's a lot of funny stuff there as well. Uh, I, I have a daily joke email for 11 years. I've sent out two jokes every morning. Uh, to uh, thousands of people across the world. You might as well get on it. It's free and it's well worth the money. <laughs> so, 
Oh, thank you very much for uh, the great interview. Unfortunately, we have to stop now because okay. you have to go to your next okay. interview. But uh, we hope to see you again sometime, okay. maybe in Germany. At uh, you know, uh, at I, I, the Gamescom. I love Germany. I would love to visit. If uh, there's a conference that wants me, I'll be there. Thank you very much.